Who that? Who that? Who that saying they're going to like this video? Saints fans, if you want the Saints to take down the Seahawks, get back on track, and get right, go down, get the thumbs up on icon on this video, and drop a like. We'll get into a breakdown right now. Welcome into New Orleans Saints Now. I'm your host, Trizzy Trace, and today we're going to be breaking down a Saints preview, keys to victory, and more for the Seahawks versus Saints matchup for NFL Week 5. But before we get started, I want to get to the injury report from Wednesday's practice, and it has, it's pretty loaded. So we have Calvin Throckmorton. He was listed as an ankle injury, but it should be a hip injury. He did not participate. Peyton Turner, chest, did not participate. Michael Thomas, still dealing with that toe injury. He did not participate. Jameis Winston, back and ankle, did not participate. P.J. Williams, quadriceps, did not participate. Ryan Ramchek, he was on rest. He was a limited participant. Uh, Marcus May, he was a limited participant as well. Andrews Peet, concussion limited participant. And Alvin Kamara, that's a big one right there. We're going to get some news here in a little bit about him. He was a limited participant. Jarvis Landry was also a limited participant. Taysom Hill with his rib issue. And Carl Grandison with his eye. He was a full participant, which is really big news. So, Houdat Nation, before we get into my keys to victory and a little bit more into this preview, I want to get to, I want to have you guys go down and subscribe. We're in a Seahawks versus Saints uh, battle. We're about to take them down. They're a bunch of frauds. They're a bunch of losers. We're going to get right. Sub for Saints Dubs. Uh, I'm getting to eat a bowl of W's with some extra dub sauce on there. Go down, subscribe. Let's get this thing going. But before we get into Morky's victory, Seahawks injury report. So they have Rashad Penny, their uh, rookie running back, excuse me. He did not participate with a shoulder injury. Austin Blythe, he had personal reasons, did not participate. Gabe Jackson, Daryl Johnson, Quentin Jefferson also did not participate. And Justin Coleman has a calf injury. He was a limited participant. Then they also have Damian Lewis, who has a calf, who, calf issue. Derek Young, I probably have that name wrong. I'm so sorry. Penny Hart, Phil Haynes, and Joey Blunt. All were full part, or all those guys were full participants, a limited participants. So that's the Seahawks injury report. They're pretty banged up. The Saints are pretty banged up. Honestly, you should probably call it like the the medical bowl or something because it's it's going to be a bloodbath. It's going to be a lot of injuries. But hopefully, the Saints can get out of it with no in extra injuries. But before we get started, who you got? Sound off down below, Who Dat Nation. I want to get the pulse for you guys. Let me know who you got. Type N-O for the Saints. Type S-E-A. Saints are getting right. They're going to get back on track. I'm spamming my N-O down below, so I want to hear from y'all just as well. So let's get into some keys to victory. First things first, offense needs to explode. And I will give an honorable mention because I have said it every week. I didn't say it this week. We need to get uh, Taysom Hill involved. That's just my honorable mention. It doesn't matter. It's whatever. But... Uh, Andy Dalton recently is probably going to get the start. Dennis Allen actually spoke about Jameis Winston during the post or his uh, post practice press conference. Wow, say that five times fast. But he was saying he's getting he's getting better, but we want to get him healthy. And I will say this: for the love of God, do not rush Jameis Winston. Do not rush him back on the field. The reason he is still hurt is because he kind of got rushed after his ACL injury. In my opinion, I don't think that that's actually the full reason. I think that there was other. You know, he had this back issue. That's has nothing to do with his ACL, but you know, it's still, he wasn't a hundred percent healthy. They rushed him back. They probably got him on the field a little too soon. Get him a hundred percent healthy before he starts another game, because when he's not healthy, he's throwing interceptions. He's making mistakes. He's clearly not focused and he's clearly all over the place. That's why I think Andy Dalton should get the start. And that's why I believe Andy Dalton will get the start because look what he did against Minnesota, 19 for 25, 204 yards and a touchdown. That's pretty dang good. I really liked what I saw out of him from the, uh, from the backup quarterback. There's not really a lot more you could add from a backup quarterback and I think that the game plan is pretty dang simple they don't need to be crazy just play four clean quarters you don't have to have some crazy trick plays up your sleeves Pete Carmichael doesn't necessarily need to be in his bag to beat a weak Seahawks defense I think that if the game plan is simple and effective and well run they will have no problem winning this game Second key to victory, they got to continue to bring the pressure. They got to continue to bring sacks. They got to continue to bring you know, pressure on Geno Smith. Uh, the, we, we'll get into some offensive rankings for the, or some defensive rankings for the Saints here in just a minute. But the last time that the Saints and the Seahawks played was, we, or was I believe, week seven of last year. Saints won on a 13, 13 to 10 on a rainy Monday night football game. And J Jarvis, or not Jarvis Landry, Jameis Winston and Alvin Kamara were finally getting on sync and finally getting back on track it was a really fun thing to see happen and it was really really interesting and I really liked what I saw out of the out of the two of them 
getting, you know, that connection and getting that spark and getting that, getting the offense, having that juice. Like if you remember, the Saints started off last season pretty darn slow, but after that game, it seemed like the offense had the spark. It seemed like they were ready to go, and we're due for a big game from the offense. The Saints' offense is due to have a big lineup. I, I want to see big things from Jarvis Landry. I want to see Michael Thomas if he can play. He probably won't. I would love to see him get involved. He's likely not going to play, but you still have to mention him just in case. I want to see Chris Olave get some shots. I want to see Taysom Hill get the ball. I want to see Jawan Jennings have the ball in his hand. Or not, uh, Jawan Johnson, excuse me. I want to see Jawan Johnson have the ball in his hand. I think that these are all really talented players, but you know, as, I, as Alvin Kamara said, don't let Andy Dalton run the ball because he's slower and I'll get out. But if the offense is healthy and the offense is ready to go, let it rip. I'm telling you, open up the playbook, let it go. Don't make it too, or don't over complicate it. Make it simple. Have some fun with it. The Saints offense just needs to leave week five with some confidence. The, that's been the biggest issue in my perspective, in my opinion, with the Saints offense is that they keep having these late game comebacks and they're having to score all these points and get all the, make up all this ground uh, at the end of the game. But realistically, that's not how you win football games. Yeah, it worked against a, a crappy Falcons team, but that's not going to work against quality teams later in the season. It's time for the Saints to get, on, get back on track. And I'm not ever going to waver. It's hoot at forever. I bleed black and gold, and I'm damn proud to do it. I love the New Orleans Saints, and at the end of the day, I want to see them, I wanna see them succeed. I want to see them win, and I want to see the Saints get back on track. So before we get into more keys and victory, let's help the Saints get back on track, guys. Spam hoot at a, like a million times. I'm not kidding you. A more times the better. And because whoever spams it the most, one, you'll be the biggest reason the Saints got back on track. And two, if you break, if you go more than 52 times, you're going to get a shout out because that's the record from the last time I asked comment who dat a multiple times. What somebody commented it 52 times. I believe it was go Tigers. Shout out you, my guy. We're going to get some shout outs later in the video, but I want to give you guys a chance to get a shout out on the next one. Go down, comment who dat as many times as you want, and let's have some fun. All right, next key to victory, I want to see I want to see uh, I want to see Rashad Penny getting take out of the, taken out of the game. I think that Rashad Penny is a phenomenal running back and he has a lot of talent. And he has a he's a he's a dog. At the end of the day, he's a dog and you have to limit him. He is going to he's been a rookie and he's been a breakout and he's done a lot of good things. And if you take a look at his stats here, he's going to be he he's done some phenomenal things in less than 50 carries. He has 49 carries, less just under 300 yards, two touchdowns and an average of 6 yards. I mean, this is a great running from a great a rookie running back. I think the Seahawks got kind of a steal out of this guy, but I want to see Pete Warner really take a step. This guy, when I tell you, has been a dog, has been eaten. I mean, like that quote from, uh, from Hard Knocks, if you want to piss like a puppy, stay on the porch, let the big dogs eat. Pete Warner is a big dog. This guy leads the NFL in solo tackles with 31. I'm looking for another big game. I want to see him keep going off because Pete Warner, hats off to you, my friend. I know a lot of people were worried about the uh, linebacker two position with Quan Alexander signing with the Jets this offseason, but man, keep it rolling, brother. I'm, I'm loving I'm loving Pete. I'm loving it. And if you want to bet on Pete Warner getting a bunch of tackles, because I know that I'm probably going to, you can check out our sports book partner at BetUS. Give it the link do down below, chatsports.com slash bet. Plug in promo code CHAT125 for an 125% deposit bonus. Now you might be asking, Trizzy Trace, what does that mean? Let me tell you what that means. You put down 100 bucks, and they're going to match that 125%. So you put in 100, you're going to end up with $225 to bet on. And if you ask me, I'm hammering this right here. I'm hammering this right here. I'm going to make sure I got it right here. I'm smashing this Saints five and a half because I'm expecting a big game from Alvin Kamara. I'm expecting a big game from the Saints offense. I'm expecting a big lockdown win from the Saints defense. Go down, uh, use the promo code chat125, chatsports.com slash bet. Get started with BetUS today. Key to victory number four, got to feed Alvin Kamara. If he plays which is looking like he will, you got to feed him. And uh, Catherine Terrell, she tweeted this out yesterday, said Alvin Kamara said he's feeling good and he plans to play on Sunday, which is really, really good information. I'm really excited to see that. And I think that it w in, my, in my opinion, if you ask me, I believe Alvin Kamara should get a lot of touches this week. And by t a lot of touches, I mean a lot of smart touches. I'm not saying feed him the ball 40 or 50 times because that is ridiculous and that's unreasonable. But what I'm saying is give him quality and smart touches at reasonable times when they need it or when he needs to pop off, excuse me, in order to really what uh, in in order to really 
maximize his use and maximize his usage because you don't want to further risk injury because he is a part of the long-term plan. Last year, Alvin Kamara did really, really well against the Seahawks. He had 20 carries for 51 yards, 11 receptions for 128 yards, and a touchdown. And like I said earlier, this was the game that Jameis Winston and Alvin Kamara finally got on the same page. And he also, last year, averaged 11.6 receiving yards. Like, that's amazing. That's astounding. I don't know what more you could ask for from a running back. So I wanted to get you guys' gauge on this. Put your coach's hat on. Be Dennis Allen for a second. Do you want and should Alvin Kamara play against Seattle? Type P for play. Type S for sit. Let me, do, let me know down in the comment section what you're thinking. If you ask me, I think he should play. But, you know, like I said, smart reps, not a ton of them. Give them a lot of touches that are smart, not a lot of touches that are just for the sake of running the ball. Last key to victory. Who protect the damn ball? I mean, it, it's, it, I don't know why at, at this point in the season we're still having to talk about this. The Saints, you guys are really – I love you. I love the Saints. I bleed black and gold. I've been a Saints fan for over 10 years, for almost 12 years at this point, since I could remember watching football. I mean, it's ridiculous how – Fumbling is in, in turnovers are this much of an issue. Nick Underhill actually put this out today, and it kind of gave me some. It made me feel a little bit better about things. He said Dennis Allen said that the team spent more time today working on ball security, and he showed the team examples of when the ball gets turned over around the league, and told them not to try to do that as much ex as possible and expose themselves to turnover possibilities. Which I think is hilarious because let's be honest, most of those highlights were the Saints. The Saints lead the NFL in giveaways. Like you're saying, you're showing examples from around the league. Brother, that's just tape. That's just showing tape at practice. That's film study. That's that every football team ever has done in, you know, the history of ever. The Saints lead the NFL in giveaways. This is absolutely ridiculous. I, I've done my rants in the past, and I'm not going to do it anymore. But Alvin Kamara, I think, said it best, and we have said it a million times. He said this in a, in their after practice day. I don't feel like we're be we're, we've gotten beat this season. We've beaten ourselves, and I could not agree more. And here's my take on all of this. If there are zero turnovers, the Saints win. And I, I, I don't think that there's another way around it. I think that the Saints will be victorious if they come out of the game, no turnovers, they force a turnover may, uh, and get the defense rolling, keep the offense excited, keep the offense energetic, and keep the offense you know, extremely hype and, uh, and you know, give them some confidence to feed into this next stretch of tough games. I think the Saints will win if there are no turnovers. But I want to hear from you guys. Let me know your score predictions. Down, comment it down below. Who, let me know. Saints, Seahawks, it's a big game. Week five, the get right game. It's going to be tough. It's back at the dome. I'm really excited to see it. And my score prediction, uh, before I get to that, I want to give you guys a second to go down and comment. Let me know your score predictions. Mine, I'm going to say Saints 24, Seahawks 17. Like I said, it's going to be that get right game that the Saints need, and the Saints are going to have big time. I really, really hope that the Saints can come out victorious. If I'm wrong, uh, this will be a fun recap video, so be sure to turn on notifications, subscribe. But before we get out of here, I promise one more thing, and I love the Who That Nation, so I got to give you all some shout outs. So shout out to my boy Zane. He said that he's, a, he's from Louisiana. He's an LSU fan. He's a Saints fan. He's a new subscriber, so I wanted to make sure to show him some love. Pete Fish, T. Scott, Raymond Hitt, and Mason Watson. I saw you asking for a, I, I, I saw you. Wow, that is hard to speak, Seatman. I saw you asking for a shout out, and of course, asking you shall receive here on Saints Now. So I got you, my guy. If you guys want to call, if you guys want to shout out, spam Hoot out. Don't forget the record's 52 times. Hoot at Nation, y'all stay golden. I'll catch you later.